I came to know the Lord when I was eight, so I guess almost 30 years ago. I was raised Catholic, so I've always known God, but really uh, started having a relationship with Christ when I came to this country 13 years ago. I felt like in singleness, as he provided marriage, I thought, gosh, he's been so good up to this point. He'll be so good in marriage. And then Scott and I are all of a sudden find ourselves with an eight-month-old and a breast cancer diagnosis. Life was going along as normal. And then you get a phone call from a doctor who's telling you that your son's been diagnosed with a life-threatening disease. I recently uh, suffered a stroke back in December. My story of separation and then divorce, that time being a very painful time, a time where I was crying on a daily basis. And it was like somebody had walked into our home and just a bomb had gone off. Every aspect of my family was, was radically changed. We were gonna be on a long road for several years of daily chemotherapy. And I looked at my little boy who looked so small in that big bed and I just thought, what, what's gonna happen to my son? And of course I was facing many decisions, many difficult decisions, uh, having a, a, a small girl with me. One of the last things during that time that God told me was that I was to stay single. And of course I did not like that. Usually I can live with it, but there are days that are harder. And, uh, but I, God has shown me that when I obey, of course, um, his plans are better than mine. But he'd been so faithful in advance of this season to provide community and provide a knowledge of his words. When we came through it, it's like we were already in the ark of protection. Through community, members of the church coming around my wife and family and praying with them and encouraging them. I mean, God in his mercy and grace allowed something that could have been very devastating to come out very well. The next day I was back to normal, which is a real miracle. Most recently, I've just seen him um, be faithful through an unexpected journey through keeping kids in foster care. I did not know what I was doing. I had never parented before, but he just provided steps along the way. Like, you really have no choice but just to trust the Lord because you don't know when they're coming, you don't know when they're going. You just have to trust that he knows what's best for me and what's best for those kids. Even if it's a uh, severe sickness, uh, which we've experienced in our family, or death, or near-death experiences of just knowing that God uh, promises that He's going to be faithful, you know, because He's called us to be holy, to be set apart, and He said that He's the one that's going to be faithful to see us through to the end. Five uh, years later, my son has, has been declared cured of cancer. And so what I'd tell people who can't see the picture, they don't know the end, it's as if the Lord has given them multiple pieces of a puzzle, but they don't know what kind of picture God's creating. I just feel like through that journey, like I have just seen just people that I didn't expect to be part of our story. I also surrounded myself by um, the body of Christ, and they were also very important during those times. My small group became my community group, and they were very active. Uh, in the whole process, I submitted myself to their authority and the authority of the Bible, and of course God used them too. And within the next year, facing the reality that future kiddos are really likely off the table for us, as kind of all things feminine for me are shut down um, due to cancer, and just blown away by God's kindness to us, his shock, his surprise as we look back as Scott calls him the little miracle baby, the one that um, God provided when we didn't know we needed but he provided exactly what we needed. The Bible tells when Jesus was, it just um, fed the 5,000 and, and he talks about how he's the bread of life and how in order for us to have a relationship with the Lord, we, we've got to trust him. To stay in the word and to be in constant prayer. God is faithful and he will answer and he will show the steps that we are to follow one by one if we're willing to listen. There's another story in Mark 9 where a father's son is He's, um, he's sick. And the father takes his son to the disciples and the disciples are unable to do anything. So eventually they're exasperated and they come to Jesus. And, and the father begs for Jesus, if you can heal my son. And, and Jesus responds to, me like, to him like, if, no, I, I, can, I can do that. And the father's response is so classic. He says, I believe Jesus, help my unbelief. And so when we're going through those those dark periods, we find ourselves in that tension sometimes. I do believe, Lord, I want to believe. And then those times where it's hard for me to believe, Lord, help me, help my unbelief. And, um, and it's then I think God's Spirit just begins to help you on a daily, moment-by-moment -moment basis of just recognizing 
that um, he truly is the one we can trust, even with the sickness of our son. Um, and it may not turn out exactly the way we want to, but that doesn't change the fact that God's good and he's in control.